What's up gamers, welcome back to another Honkai Star video. Now, last time I did one of these Pride Win tier list ones, and unfortunately, because of IRL stuff, this is how it's going to line up. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing another one kind of back to back. Now, last time I did this, it seems a lot of Kafka simps and a few other people got mad at me for my takes. Um, is what it is, not going to cover it in this video. I was considering a response video, but I don't really think it adds anything to the conversation, especially because some of the people in the comment section are just flat out wrong about what they're saying. Uh, besides that, I want to go over the Pride Win tier list, the thing they up, uh, that they, the things that they've updated, and all that. Right? Uh, they've changed the ranking of a couple characters and also added uh, a new character. So, <clears throat> in terms of changes, right? What they've done this time is they've moved Ambivitor Lune to S plus. Now. Previously, I stated that I think he was S plus anyways, but however, I actually agree with this now completely because their justification for it is the fact that Sparkle makes his skill point management uh, easier for his teams. And this, honestly, I'd have to agree. Um, I used him a bit more since then, and I actually, it. I know he's powerful, right? I'm like, come on, like let's be let's be real here, right? I, I do all this theory crafting and like you know meta stuff. Um, I, I obviously know he's powerful, but I got the feel from him that he just doesn't feel good to use. Like, this is personally, I don't like how he feels to use. He feels bad to use to me. Even though, like, I know he's powerful, he does a lot of damage, he just feels bad to use for me personally. Um, <clears throat> but Sparkle definitely does change this because she gives him a lot of valuable damage buffs that he really wants, right? You get attack, you get crit damage, and you get damage percent. She does a whole bunch in her one kit. It's very powerful for Bibiter Lune. And this also changes with Eidolons. Obviously, their list doesn't really cover Eidolons, but her Eidolons are very strong for a character. And even if this is supposed to be about Bibiter. <laughs> Dan Daniel, right? Um, I, I do think it makes sense to move him up considering how uh, it's. What, what would you put it? More consistent now that Sparkle exists, right? Uh, with his uh, team options. So. Yeah, I, I think that's totally uh, fair to leave him up there. And I, as I said previously, I, I, I've i stated this a while ago. I still, like, always and to this day think that they are the king and queen of the game. By far, just above everybody else without question. Uh, they just do too much. And it, especially Jing Liu. It's like, the... I mean, look, people can disagree with me saying that they messed up uh, with their kit. And I'm not saying they did mess up with their kit. But they went a little crazy. Uh, with the release version of this character and like what she can do right um so yeah well we'll see and the funny thing is is that she doesn't really have i mean she's gotten you know obviously other uh characters you know introduced to help with the team uh but we don't have any like skill specific stuff so there's always an opportunity that she does get upgrades down the line like direct upgrades which i think is pretty cool um so yeah <clears throat> yeah it makes sense to move dan up 100 percent now, Jing Yuan, our general, right? Now, this one, I think, is actually totally fair. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, there's no way Jing Yuan's S tier above these other characters. And, well, Sparkle just does that much for him. Sparkle makes his team so, like, easy to run, giving you the SP. Because the thing is, unlike some, I, I guess Dan, for example, right? Unlike someone who's using multiple skill points a turn, you're only ever using two skill points per, like, rotation you're doing. Which means you were completely skill point neutral for this character, but because Sparkle is the way she is, it means your team's overall skill point positive for the most part. So you can run Jing Yuan's team and have like full SP the whole time and still output crazy damage. Because, again, we have two characters here that are buffing him with everything he wants. You're getting attack, you're getting crit, you're getting damage percent, right? You're getting the increased break, you're getting the speed. Like, this. Right now, Jing Yuan is a lot better since launch. He's gotten multiple direct buffs via relic sets. <clears throat> Any you know, new character releases. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. And as well as indirect buffs with characters like Fu Xuan, who will prevent CC and other, you know, various effects buffing him. He's actually, like, I think this is the first time I can say this. Like, he's actually good. Um, He's gotten so much help since the release of the game. And genuinely, his performance, I do think, <clears throat> is uh, pretty, pretty good. And arguably better than these characters down here. It just, it, he, 
he's just like improved so much in terms of uh runnability right and as well as actually getting characters that work with his kit right because before he launched right no one buffed him except for like two characters Tin Yun and Pella right and yeah sure there's Asta but there's anti-synergy with uh Bronya right and then Silver World doesn't really do much for him and so he's finally got characters that actually work with him oh and then the CC resist from Fujuan so he finally has characters that works well with him and his like pretty solid kit just makes him you know worthy of S tier I think it's totally fair moving him up uh at this point right and you can see this for like a couple of characters like I've seen I've talked to some people and they they think Dan is sort of in the same boat where he uh was really strong but didn't have much uh team synergy <clears throat> and I guess that's kind of fair um because you you have what Ting Yun Kong right Bronya is SP sync and uh, obviously Pella is really good I, I still actually I disagree heavily with this Pella rank but we'll get in that to a second um so yeah I mean yeah that, that makes sense I think it's fair to move him up um there I I can I don't necessarily agree with the other characters but <laughs> or we got to go through the change changes first uh so they move Asta down good uh, oh wait actually did I read this uh, well, you guys understand, it's like the Sparkle's buff actually works with Jingyuan's Lightning Lord, unlike the other characters, so this is totally fair, and all that stuff, right? Alright, so they move Asta down. I think this is totally fair. Uh, I I mean, there are reasons because Rune may exist, basically, and the fact that more characters want, like, you know, they want, like, Ting Yun and whatnot. Uh, I... <sighs> look, look. Here's the thing. I think Asta is terrible. <laughs> I'll be honest. The speed buff, like, I understand the point of the speed buff and what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> but she's only giving you X amount of attack that is type dependent to keep up, otherwise she's incredibly skill point efficient. All of her Eidolons, like, from E0 to E6 is insane. Her E0 state is just, I, I honestly, it's like unusable. All right, they put her at C tier. I, yeah pretty much it's it's like legit unusable at like e0 and then e6 isn't that much better i just don't think she provides it and we can talk about speed and action values all day um but basically i don't think she's providing enough to warrant being above other characters pretty much and i think she relies way too much on the e6 to actually like be runnable uh, i just really hate this character she feels like she's doing nothing for like any team that she's put on honestly um and so I guess B is fair, considering that if you were to compare her to Hanya, it's like you're getting the speed for one character, but a bigger attack boost and damage percent. Is Hanya just better? I don't know. I mm, That one's kind of weird to me, but... <clears throat> I don't know. My allergies are messing with me. But yeah, I, I just... I think it's totally fair to put Asta down. I don't like her. Um, and how she functions. It's it's too whack. Um, we'll get to Pell in a second. So they move Henya down for the same reason. I guess that's fair. Uh, I, I genuinely... or Not genuinely. Um, I kind of think Henya is more, like, impactful in terms of, like, what she can do. But I guess... I mean, it, I guess it's fair to, like, say it's the same reason as Asta. As, like, the other characters just do way too much com in comparison to Henya, who is, like attack damage taken um or it's attack damage percent not damage taken uh, i believe and then speed which is very good but it's kind of niche the teams you'd want to run with her you, you can do like pseudo 200 speed teams and all that stuff um so yeah i, I don't know about henya uh i i guess it's fair but yeah uh yukong moving down yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was a bit high on Yukong when she first came out. She's not good. I I sometimes saw her in the team if I really need to, but it's like she... Ah, man, I don't... I think she's just bad. I... It's really hard to put place it, but... I think it's probably because of her turn restriction on the buffs. Not being her turn. If it was two of her turns... Oh my god, bro, she'd be up here. <laughs> she'd be up here. I just... Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, like, too annoying to use her. And even though she has, like, theoretically the highest potential gain, giving me, like, 70 
70 plus crit damage, you know, 70% attack, like insane game. You're just limited and then you eat up skill points with her. So it's just it's it's just a weird character. I don't know what it is, but I really liked her in the beginning. But she just feels terrible. Um, so I guess that's fair. And they move Sashang down. Uh because what was performance? Is that what? Yeah, they, so performance and useless rage. Um, I don't think Sashang was that crazy to begin with. And I mean, they're, they're putting her as a specialist, right? Which is uh, debatable. I think she's more of a DPS, to be honest. I know people are using her as a break specialist because of her, uh, you know, her high uh, toughness break and the break in her kit, as well as the extra turns. So you get a lot of actual, like, break going out. I, that one, I mean, I guess that's fair in terms of, like, the, the placement, but I don't know. No, actually, I think that's just fair. I think that's completely accurate. So Shing isn't really doing too much. Um, I do think MC could probably be moved up, but that, again, that's like here or there. Um, and then they go into the pure fiction. Okay, I'll, I'll go into that in the second part. So overall, what do I think of this? I think this is actually pretty good. Uh, I agree with it for the most part. Holy. Um, again, I think it's totally fair to put these two at the top. I did, like, obviously... And Bibbidi Lune's, like, peak is, like, crazy high, but then, like, Jing Liu's is the same way, and then she's just so free, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, I, I think ratio is generally pretty good. Um, let's see, Jing Yuan, I've got a buff. QQ, I don't think belongs up here. I know people are going to be like, oh, but the RNG. It's, like, if you... <sighs> here, let me... <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody sent a clip of this. Um... Let me, let me pull it up, actually. Yeah, yeah, so there's a Mr. Pokey clip. That is, um, quite something. So... Five skill points for this, right? Sorry, I had to cut, but... QQ, the, the RNG character eats through 10 skill points, still doesn't get four of a kind. Um, look, I understand. Oh, she has the potential to perform, and what some people point out. Some people in the comments were like, oh, she can do more damage than Bibbidi Lune. I'm just like, excuse me? Um, look, I just don't think she deserves S tier. It, there's too much going on with this character, and Zealus just kind of, like, practically better um I, I i just i don't know i understand the rng like that's the again the rng thing that's why they're putting her up there but i just i don't know about that one man um same thing with zila i generally think you could move zila down however she got sparkle i this, again this is saying like what i said last time where i said you could move zila down she has sparkle now so i think it's kind of justified uh, that she has Sparkle getting the crit buffs. Uh, so you can go more crit rate. You can get your double crit buff on Mono Quantum, right? And get guaranteed crits, do a ton of damage. I think it's pretty justified actually keeping her there. So n no real changes needed. Everyone else in the DPS tier, I think is fine. Uh, yeah, again, Argenti's mid, uh, Blade's all right. And then these characters are totally fine up here. Misha sucks. Kind of unfortunate is what it is. And then the rest of the kids is fine. Uh, so, yeah, not terrible. Um, Actually, Hertz is kind of debatable, but I, I guess that's fine. Because, I mean, these characters down here aren't really doing anything. Maybe you could swap Herta and Hook. Maybe. I don't know if that's coping. Uh, but for Specialist, again, so last time, I, I, I think I mentioned it earlier. Kafka players attacked me. They got really mad I didn't like their waifu in S uh, plus tier. Now, I have read all the arguments. Um, I'll have you know, 
do not go in the comment section and try to explain dot damage to me. I know how it works, okay? The one dude, I, okay, look, this is not, not supposed to be a response video to those insane comments of people just being flat out wrong. Uh, I know how dot damage works. You don't need to explain it. <laughs> Bro, this shit's so funny. <laughs> I... I'm sure there's some person that's gonna like ironically put it down there, but having the the person try to explain how dot works to me is so funny, dude. I know how it works. Do I have to pull up the like E6 uh, Black Swan and like Kafka like stuff? Do I do I have to pull that up? I can hop onto uh you know the the whale account and show it. Like, come on. I I, I don't know. Um, so it should be an S tier. Debatable. Debatable. I think it is fair to actually move her down. But it's okay to put her in S+, plus, right? What people didn't understand and what uh, people were criticizing me, I, I guess, fairly for, is the investment point. And my investment point isn't, like... <clears throat> my, my point was how much you have to put into the character to make them run, right? That's sort of my point. With a character like Jing Liu or Rune Mei, it's not a lot that you have to put into the character to make them run at a decent level. To get Kafka to, or not decent, but I guess optimal level, like you don't have to put a lot, well, how am I supposed to word this? You don't have to put a lot into Runemei and Jing Liu to get them to start running at a decent level, right? And then there's, you know, room to grow for the optimal level. For Kafka, right, Everything is decent until you get to the optimal optimal level. So, like, you have to invest so much into getting exact speed stats, exact uh, attack stats. And while some people are going to be like, oh, but the crit. I don't think crit is a problem when you have characters that give themselves, like, 50% crit rate, 40% crit damage here, 10% uh, crit damage from the skill, right? Oh, here's another 10% crit from the light cone. It's like, I... Look... At a high investment level, the crit is an issue, especially with someone like Jing Liu. Just like how the speed and attack is an issue at high investment level of Kafka. I'm just saying, from my perspective, having to build out a team of all five stars requires more time investment, because it, again, it's, it's just factually more resources, on top of the fact that you need to hit specific breakpoints with these DOT characters, to where I'm just saying it takes more like that you have to put more into to start getting a lot of gain out of it right as to where again you can slap random shit on like these two characters and get out of it so like i again i think it's totally fair to put her in s plus but people were trying to uh like say that i was saying something else of my argument saying that oh it's not an investment thing or like they don't understand my investment point my whole point is that you have to literally like put more into it right and they're trying to say is like, oh, but you have to factor in the crit. And I'm like, in specific, the one example I'm poking at is the guy who said Jing Liu doesn't go for 100% crit when she literally gives herself 50% crit. If you're not doing that, you're just playing wrong. Um, so I, I just like again, it's fair, but I'm just saying you literally have to put more like resources into getting these people up and running versus these two. Is that's like that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's like, oh, I, okay. I, maybe I'm just explaining this wrong and maybe I have to pull up their criteria or whatever, but I just, I just think that you have to invest more to get out of like the DOT stuff. Like that's like, like, like that's it. Like you just have to invest more to get to X level sort of thing. Like I, maybe I'm just explaining this wrong. But I, 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 oh my god, you know what, whatever, if I keep talking, I'm going to get even more dislikes in the last one, and more Kafka sims that are just mad at me, because I didn't say their characters as plus, um, or, or whatever, like, okay guys, go ahead, explain DOT, I know she enables DOT, go ahead, I, 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 what am, what am I even doing, what am I even doing, um, <laughs> yeah, everyone else is fine, uh, you could probably move Gwen Ifen up, but but because of like um wait, am I biased because of I don't know. I think you could probably move Gwen Ifen up to be honest with you, but that's here nor there.
And then same thing with MC. I think MC could be moved up. In terms of these characters, I do think... Okay, I've been interrupted like three times when making this. As I was saying, <clears throat> I think Pella needs to be moved up. She's really good. She does a lot. And uh, it, it would be kind of weird to have a gap between these four stars, but Pella is... What Pella gives you is like crazy. It's Again, it's like complete, can be completely skill book positive. Massive defense shred uh, AoE. I, I do think she is worth being put in S+. Like she, she goes basically everywhere. I mean, you can definitely make the argument that, oh, these characters take the slot over her. Or, I, I mean, I guess that's the main argument, actually, that they take the slot over her. But I, I think it's fair to have her in the same tier. I mean, maybe people are going to argue no because Bronya's is up here, and I guess that's fine. Um, But, like, I, I just, I don't know. That, that was kind of whack. And then the sustains, nothing changed with the sustains. Uh, again, I think this is this is kind of fair. Um, I did say this last time, so I'll reiterate this. I do think all three of these sustains are at the same level. I think they are equal. Um, but I, it's it's fair to have Fushuan at the top, um, especially if they're going to be biased. <clears throat> God, my voice is all over the place. <clears throat> <clears throat> what was I saying? It, it, either way, I think that's totally fair to put them uh, up there. All right, Pure Fiction. So, Pure Fiction, they uh, moved Jingyu Wan up uh, because of Sparkle, right? And Sparkle's placed here. Uh, Hinya moved down, same with Asta. Again, Asta, terrible, I think. Uh, they also adjusted everyone else's rank because Silver Wolf does nothing in Pure Fiction. So, nothing really happened here. Uh, they just moved the buffers down and moved Jingyu Wan up. Uh, I think it's totally fair. Uh, I, I do think that this is fair to put these characters here. Uh, I still think Herta needs to be moved down one because she kind of needs somebody to enable her. I don't think she can really solo Pure Fiction. I mean, kind of to an extent if you do like, you know, some hyper buffing stuff. But I, I don't, I, I feel like Argenti is generally better, but maybe it's just a matchup thing. Uh, I, I kind of think she needs Himiko to function really well in Pure Fiction. That's really my whole point. Like you kind of want to run dual DPS and it's Pure Fiction. So you kind of want to do that anyways, but I feel like Herta need somebody to enable her right and this is something that the c inside has done mr pokey did a video over it of uh putting himiko and herta together is as plus right and that's sort of where i'm coming from is that i think together they are s plus i don't think they're really that strong uh like separately i mean himiko obviously she's got aoe right and can do um pretty solid damage so it, again it could put it's fair to put her here but i do think herta probably should be moved down um, but that's, it's, it's nothing too big. Uh, I kind of think Zila could be moved down because I, I mean, look, we could talk about the skill point thing with sparkle. You could just a uh, basic and then skill and then get a rotation where you spend seven skill points, killing each one at the, at each one at a time or something, or like use a basic to get a kill or something like that. Like, again, it, there's a bunch of whack stuff you can do here, but I think, just due to the nature of pure fiction, you could probably move Kalara and Zila down. I know that's gonna like people are gonna be upset about that, but I, I genuinely like I mean, there's some tech you can do with Kalara, right? And she does have AoE, but it's eh. um Zila's primarily single target and her uh, you know extra turn obviously helps her there, but I don't know. I don't really think she can be put up here. Same thing with QQ. It's like QQ is blast and then AoE, but she's eating up all your skill points, and so she's just really inefficient for this. And you can argue the same thing with Dan, but his base damage is higher, so you can just use, like, level 2 and then clear. Um, and so it kind of makes sense that he's better than these characters, right? But I I, I don't know. I don't know. And I, Some people are going to probably point out the Jingle Leo one, and I guess that's fair, but... Yeah, I just, I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of weird with these non-AoE characters, right? Uh, but, like, I guess the main thing with Jingle Liu is you can do Blade Jingle Liu as a dual DPS and just, you know, a wave clear with follow attacks. Uh, but, yeah, it's whatever. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, I agree with it. So the same. So, um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I don't really have much more to yap about. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Maybe my yapping is going to get more people mad at me again. Uh... <laughs> Because maybe I said something wild. I don't know. Uh, in, in case you're one of those Kafka simps, no, I don't hate the character. Okay? 
And if you ever hear me say something like DOT cringe, it is cringe. But it's not that serious, guys. It's like a, it's like it's just like a joke. Like, come on. <laughs> okay? Like it's obviously good. We know how it works. All right. It Kafka enables <laughs> i'm not making the case for myself any better here uh yeah um that's why i said english god that's all i have to say to, for today uh let me know what you guys think down below and i'll see you in the next one